Hi everyone, uh, welcome back. We're going to now start our second part of our experience learning. So this is our English section and we are learning about a different type of writing, aren't we? We are learning about letters. So I'm going to share my screen with you so we can see our learning objective for today. So we need to learn to write letters in different ways so we can write to our new friends in Australia and tell them all about what it's like to live where we live. So today we're going to look at informal letters. So the learning objective is to know the features of an informal letter and we're still in our remembering stage. Our first success criteria is to list the key features of an informal letter. And our second success criteria is to identify the key features of an informal letter. So to find those features in a letter. So yesterday we were writing down what a formal and what an informal letter were. Today we're looking at informal letters. Can you pause the video and have a think, what was an informal letter? Off you go. Did you remember? An informal letter is a letter that is written in a personal fashion. You write them to your family or to people that you know. So it's a friendly letter, isn't it? An informal letter. Well done if you remembered. Super. And we were also thinking of some examples of when you might write an informal letter. So pause the video. How many different reasons for writing an informal letter can you think of? Off you go. Right, how many did you think of? I thought of postcards, birthday cards, party invitations, thank you letters, and Christmas letters to Santa. Some of you came up with some ones that I hadn't thought about when I saw your work from the other day. Right, so let's move on to our learning for today then. What are the features of an informal letter? So how do we lay one out? I would like you to draw for me the middle of a bubble map. So can you see I've got informal letters in the middle of mine? So pause the video now and draw yourself as the start of a bubble map with informal letters in the middle, off you go. Fantastic. Right, we have got a video to watch. Now in this video, it talks about informal letters and the features of them, so how to lay one out. So let's have a watch together. us what an informal letter is. And she gives us some examples just like we've come up with. Here we go. What is the format of an informal letter? Pay attention. Ooh, address, date, salutation, opening remarks, content. How would you start a letter? the bit in the middle where she talks about the format of an informal letter. So we're going to play this bit again. You might need to pause it so you can write it down. But on your bubble map, can you record all the different things that need to be included in the format of a letter? Get your bubble wrap, get your bubble map ready 
and then let's watch it again together. So pause me if you need to. Okay, ready? Let's see what we can write down. Address, date, salutation, opening remarks, content, closing remarks, and a signature. If you didn't get all of those, you can just rewind and play again and make sure you've got them all written down in your bubble map. Look at mine. So I've got, I needed a sender's address. That's really important. On a letter, we need to write where we live. So we need to write our address. We are the sender. So our address needs to be written on the letter. We need to have what's called a salutation. Can you say that? Salutation. 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 Well done. So that's a fancy word for just saying dear at the beginning of your letter or hello or hi. So I might say dear Sally or dear Rosie to start my letters. Then you need the date. So you need to say what date your letter has been written. At the bottom of our letter, we need to write our own name. So we sometimes would use a signature to sign off our letter. A good informal letter needs an introduction where you say what your letter is going to be telling the person you've written to about. So you're going to introduce the subject of your letter. And then you've got at the bottom, before you do your signature, because it's an informal letter, you might write love from Anne or love from Emily. And lastly, the main part of your letter, which is called the body or content. And that is going to be the part where you write everything you want to say in your letter. So these are the features of an informal letter. If you missed any, you could just pause the video now and record any that you missed. Off you go. Fantastic. Right, so now we've achieved our first success criteria. We have listed all the features of an informal letter. So we're going to go on to the second one, which is to identify or find the features of an informal letter. So I've got a letter here which I have made up. So this letter is written from somebody called Sally and it is from somebody called Anne. So there are all the features of our letter on this page. I wonder if either you could print this off and identify by drawing and labeling each part or just with your finger you could point to which part you think is each section. So where is the address? Where is the date? Where is the salutation or dear? Where is the introduction? Where is the main body of the letter? Where is the love from? And where is the signature or name? So this is your next task. Can you identify the features of the letter either by printing this off and finding those features, or if you haven't got a printer, you could just point, off you go. Fantastic, well done. Hopefully you have identified the features of the letter. So up here, now first box, we had the date, uh, not the date, <laughs> we had the address the address of where we live or where we're writing from. So Sally goes to Seal Primary School. So she's got her address up here. Then she's got her date here when she's written it. So that's today, Wednesday, the 3rd of February. Here's her salutation where she writes, dear Sally. So she's writing to Sally. This part here is her introduction. She introduces what she's going to be writing about. She's going to be telling them all about 
different places that each of them live. Here is her main body of her letter where she's writing all about the continents of Australia and England. And here is her closing, her love from, and here is the name of the person who's written the letter, and that's Anne. Hopefully you found all those, well done. Right, now we're going to come to the part where we are going to apply everything that we have learned in our experience today. So, I need you to think back to your geography that you did with Miss Robinson and think about your letter writing. Now, we are going to have a go at writing a section of our letter. And that section is going to have the information we know about Australia and about England. So we have learnt what continent Australia is in and what continent England is in or the UK. And we know what ocean goes around Europe and we know what ocean goes around Australia or oceans. So can you see here we have got a section of the letter that has been written by Anne. She has said, I live in England, which is part of the United Kingdom. The United Kingdom is surrounded by the Atlantic Ocean, which stretches all the way from Europe to America. It is the second largest ocean and without the warm water traveling from the Caribbean to the UK, the UK would be a lot colder. Australia, on the other hand, is surrounded by both the Pacific Ocean and the Indian Ocean. Interestingly, Australia is its own continent, and this is sometimes called Oceania. So, I would like you to now rewrite this part of the letter in your own words, using your knowledge that you have learned today. You need to include the continents for Australia and England or the UK. So tell your new friends about that. And you need to include the oceans. So what oceans each country is in to tell your friends about that. Brilliant. So you can pause the video now. Off you go, have a go at that. Fantastic, well done. I hope you had a good go at that, telling your new friends all about the oceans and continents that surround each of our countries. So last thing I'd like you to do, you can do this just verbally by saying it, or if you're feeling extra super brilliant, you've got a bit more energy left, you can write it down. So I want you to just reflect on everything you've learned in your experience, so geography and English. What have you learned today? How Will this help you write your letter to your new friend in Australia? And how could you use your new knowledge and skills in your wider life? So, like I said, either answer that verbally with your words, talking, or if you're feeling extra brilliant, because I'd love to read them, you can write it down. Super, well done. I hope you really enjoyed our first proper experience afternoon and I look forward to learning a little bit more about this next week because you've got your project to work on for the next two days. So enjoy that and I will see you all next week for more experience learning. Bye!